Okay. Hello, students. Uh, you're welcome to uh, Computer Network Essential Management course. And uh, today's chapter, we're staying in chapter 2. This is chapter 2, part 4. So you're welcome to this class. And uh, the topic for today will be terminating or how to terminate CAT 6, CAT 5E category of UTP. UTP or twisted or shaded twisted pair cables. Okay, so that's what we have today. How to terminate them? Okay, now let's go to uh, our next. Uh, the first introduction to this top uh, chapter is uh, looking at the information. How the information is presented in this section introduces the techniques. How we go to introduce the techniques for terminating high performance UTP cables is very important. One of the things we're going to do. The techniques that we're going to be using for terminating the high performance uh, cable. Another thing we're going to do is uh, uh, then determining the ROJ45 connector for CAT6 and CAT5E cable is uh, and how they've been defined by the ERTR standard. And this ERTR standard of 568B.2 uh, is used for the classification and the standardizations of this cable that we're going to use for this class. Now, these portions of the standard defines the specifications of the copper cable hard hardware that we are using for this class. Remember, this class is simply determination how we terminate these cables at uh, with either we terminate them on the ROJ45 uh, modular plug or ROJ45 uh, uh, modular jack. So we can terminate them at the plug or at jack or at uh, uh, telecommunication closet. Okay, now quickly, let's take a look at the, the standard specifies cable components. The standards that we're going to use, they will talk about the components of the cable. They will talk about the kind of transmission that is being used. They will talk about the system, the mode there that is used for the type of net networks that we are, we are considering. And then the measurement procedures that is needed and the verifications of the balanced twisted pair cable. All of this we're going to talk about in this, uh, uh, this part. Now, quickly, let's start with the the colors, the color terminations for twisted pair cables. Remember, the the uh, wires are twisted. There are four wires, but each one is two. Two wires are twisted together. So these four wires gives eight eight wires all together. Now these eight are eight wires are twisted in pair, which gives four wires all together, or uh, four wires in in pair. Okay, when we say four wires in pair. Now, these colors are in two modes. The first mode is called the T568A and the T568B. Okay, these are two standards that for color uh, terminations that we have done for cabling. Okay, now let's take a look at this, what we have. So, within the ERTR uh, 568B, because we use this B, standard B. Remember, we've I've already mentioned that. So we use the standard B, and then we say within the ERTR 568B standard are the wiring guidelines that we use. These wiring guidelines are the T568A and the T568B. So these are the guidelines we use in the wiring and the terminations of the wire in the modular plug or in the modular jack. Now these wiring guidelines specify the colors of the wires that connect to what pin in the connector. So every color ha color has a pin with which it's going to be uh, inserted into. So you don't just connect anyhow. You have to first of all follow. You have to follow the guidelines. If you miss this, then there will be a lot of crosstalk in the in the network, and there will be a lot a lot of not only crosstalk noise rejection ratio will be very low. Okay, now let's it will be very high. So let's take a look at this. We say this wiring guideline specify the colors of wire that connects to what pin on the connect connector that each of these wire will terminate at. Now the specification of the wire colors that connects to the to what pin is called the color map. So uh, we're going to look at the map. You see, we have what we call the color map. The color map tells us which color terminates at which pin on the connector which colors goes to which pin on the connector in the modular plug. Now, the color map specified by the T586AA or T568B 
I mean T568A and T568B. These are the two color guidelines that we are following in in uh, the computer networks. Okay, so the the choice is actually yours. They are just uh, manufacturer specific. This choice of colors or this choice of standard color standards are just manufacturer specific. So you can decide to use uh, T5568A, uh, which is a very popular one. I think this one is more popular than the T568B. But whichever one you use, it's okay. But as long as you're consistent throughout the network. So if you use it, this um, uh, standard or guidelines for uh, terminating your colors in the pins in the modular block then you have to stick with the t568a throughout the terminations and throughout your connections in your network and if you're using t568b as a color standard for terminating as a guidelines for terminating the colors in the pins in each of the individual pins because there will be eight pins in the in the connector okay there will be eight pins in the co connectors of the plug of the plug there are eight pins in the connectors of the plug so you got to stick with if you're using standard b and you got to sit with stick with it throughout your connection process in a particular network if you're using standard a which is t568a you got to stick with this one throughout your connection this guideline throughout your connection now let's take a look at what we call the color map in the color map we have two two displayed here let's start with the connector head see uh, bottom side up so we are looking all the way from here you put the uh, the wire through from the bottom to the up each of the wire will be uh, assigned to a particular pin that it fits in there is a map a color map that 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 you follow as a standard so that you don't mix this up because when you mix this up there will be a lot of problem in the network there will be crosstalk there will be high uh, high noise on the network and so on and so forth there will be no super efficiency in the network so you have to use this map okay you have to use what we call the color map in the color map white green is uh, sent to pin one in the connector with the white green color you can look take a look at it in the if you are using standard uh, a because this standard is uh, the t568a okay the, the the one on the right is the t58 uh, 568b okay now, I'm, uh, let's talk about one after the other the t we, we are talking about the t586a now first let's talk about that now in that in that uh, t5868a five uh, t568a which is the standard one or the first standard if you look at it you see that the white green color is sent to p1 look at if you look at it just take a look at it you see the, this wire is white and green white green white green white green the first wire here is white green so you go to send it to p1 in the connector you go to send this wire uh, because the map has told you what to do you have to follow you don't have to mix it up if you mix up mix it up like i said there will be a lot of interference electromagnetic interference in the network there will be a lot of crosstalk in the network so your, your network is not going to perform efficiently and effectively so in order to avert these disastrous uh, uh, issues so we have we've come up with a color map a color map guides you on the connections in terminations of uh, of uh, network wires or network cables the utp network cables so the white green colors are sent to p1 in the connector the connector will be clipped to to the plug we're going to reach there how is be done now the first thing let's explain what is be done before we do how is be done now the first step is take the green white color to pin one and the green color to pin two if you are using standard a the t568a remember this one this standard if you're using the t568a then you're going to take the green white color green white green white green white to pin one and the green only the green color to pin two or then there you see the white yellow look at the map you you come to the color map number three pin three takes the white yellow white sorry white orange color call uh p3 takes the white orange color you send the white orange color to p3 and you send the blue color to p4 and you send the white blue color to p5 you send the you send the orange color to p6 and you send the you send the white brown you look at this white brown to p7 
and then you set brown to pin 8 this is the color map and this is how the wire after you've removed this jacket you know this is later is called a jacket it's just like uh, where you wear jacket during cold uh, seasons when you or during winter you wear jacket right all of us wear jacket we wear boots to cover up our body the same thing wires they wear jackets okay the wires they wear jacket now when you do connections you terminate them at their termination point or destination you have to peel off using the clip and using the tools that are necessary to peel off the jacket so that you get to the wire each of the individual wires and then you can connect each one to the destination pin and then we clip them before we can use this uh, right, we're going to get there now let's go to the t568b the t5 uh, t568b now this one also has its own color map now the color map you see here is that uh, p1 is white orange look at it p1 okay that's it on the strike okay mashallah okay so you can see p1 is white orange so in the uh, standard a look at standard a it was white green instead that b we're using white orange okay white orange is sent to p1 in this connector p1 is here in the connector we go to bring this this color to p1 in electrical engineering this is what we do this is what you do okay you're going to bring this color so to p1 and then you're going to bring this uh, orange color to pin 2 you see it's, it differs with the the standard a the t568a is different from the t558b now the t568b in the second pin we take orange color to it but in the in the a in the t five six eight a we took a green color to pin two here in standard b we're taking orange color to pin two now p3 is white green p3 look at the color map is white green p4 is blue p5 is a white blue and p6 is green p7 is a white brown and p8 is a brown so that's the standard bid for the color map now let's move on quickly now if you take a look at this what we have done we are showing you that this map and this wire and this connector they are for standard a they are what for t568 a they are for t5 column color guidelines for standard a t is called t568 a for this uh, both this color map this uh, 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 wire the twister utp wire and this connector all are for standard a now let's quickly move move ahead quickly let's take a look at now for this second phase of it the second phase of this is showing you that the whole of this is going for the, the b the standard b the color map for b t568 b so all this color time this is the rule this is the color map this is the why the twist utp wire that is uh, terminated in this connector right now let's move on quickly now if you take a look at this we're showing you that this one and this they are the color map that guides you in how to terminate this these wires in their corresponding pin in the connector is that okay this every singular wire has a corresponding pin that is designated for in the connector now let's move ahead quickly and if we uh, especiate on what we've just said then you agree with me that the placement of the wire pairs in the roj45 modular plug okay if you were to place the each of the wire pair in the roj45 modular pair then the the a follows this color map the standard a uses this color map as a we have shown we have already explained that the white green goes to pin one the green go to pin two the white orange go to pin three the blue goes to pin four the white green, uh, blue goes to pin five and the 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 uh, orange go to pin six and then the white brown goes to pin seven and the the brown goes to pin eight so that's for standard a you can see this is t 568a color uh, map t5 uh, t5 t568 a uh, color map for standard one standard a okay that's what we do now the p numbers for the roj45 modular box are shown from what you see here what i've already explained to you right now a wire color table is used to provide 
uh, prov uh, is used provided the nest of the preachers of the cables for reference. Now, so what we do is what I have just explained to you. Now, let's move on quickly because we we have a lot to do today. Now, the placement of the wire pairs in the ROJ45 modulo plugs are shown for B. So everything you see here is for B, which I have explained. The P the 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 P1 takes color white orange. White orange goes to P1 for standard B. The T what we call the T568B color map. So in following the T568B color map, then the white orange go to P1, the orange color go to P2. Look at it. Orange color goes to P2. Look at P2 here on the connector. P2 is here on the connector. And then the white green goes to P3, goes to P3 on the connector. And then the blue goes to P4 on the connector. The white blue goes to pin 5 on the connector and then the green goes to pin 6 on the connector the white brown goes to pin 7 on the connector and then the brown goes to pin 8 on the connector so this is what we do and this is how you do it in order to avoid crosstalk if you miss this up you go to generate what we call the crosstalk interference electromagnetic interference and there will be your your your, your network will not perform efficiently and effectively now let's move on quickly now let's take a look at the differences T568A versus T568B. Now let's take a look at what is the difference between these two color mapping uh, that helps us to or that guides us on placing the pins on the on the connectors in the modular plug. What is this difference? Uh, well, a common question that people always ask is what is the difference between this T568A and T568B? now actually excuse me one minute for a moment okay actually actually these two are two different manufacturer standard there is no actual big difference between them they are just manufacturer standard in taiwan i think they stick to t568a you know it's just manufacturer standard Okay, there's no more much big differences. Manufacturers that have coded and designated each of the color to their pin and how best it works for them. Now we say these two are just uh, uh, two different manufacturer standards used to wire the modular connector hardware. Okay. Okay. We say there is not a uh, there is not a, a performance improvement with either. You can say, oh, this one performs better than the other one. No, not really. Not really. We can say that this one performs better. It's just a color of that choice that different manufacturers have uh, chosen. They have uh, decided to use. Okay, so I will say that. Let's move on quickly. Industry tends to favor the T568A wire or the more. I think it's just popular, super popular. So, okay. However, in the other can be used as long as the other is made throughout the network as long as whichever one you're using you're going to stick with it not on the same network you do a you do b no 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 super no you have to stick with one standard is that okay now let's move on quickly now wire color summary let's quickly summarize this now the materials has defined the wire color order for terminating the rj45 blocks jacks also the cat5 or cat5e or cat6 twisted pair cables now we should be able to describe the difference between the the two standard whether you say the standard a or the standard b color uh, wire color order you should be able to 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 differentiate them okay and then we should make sure that we know what wire color configuration you're using in a network so if you're using the standard a so for short i just call it standard a it's it, it's its name is actually t568a okay you just say if you're using standard a or standard b and and uh, make sure you specify you specify hardware that is compatible with your selected color scheme so you have to specify okay so that we know now let's take a look at in computer another subtopic within what we're doing called the computer communications because com computers cannot communicate in a wired network without the proper net wire networking so uh, as such 
uh, like we have discussed uh, the cat 5 cat c cat 5e cat c cables contain five twisted wire pairs right they contain contain four twisted sorry four twisted wire pairs now what we mean by wire pairs each one is two two wires are like wounded together like they wrap over each other okay each wire wrap over another wire so they become pair they become pair like a family like a family like a husband and a wife okay they they wounded together they wounded together upon auto each other to give a pair and the same here same here same here there are actually eight wires but when you wound them together when you wrap them over each other you have four wire pairs we call four wire pairs now so what you see here is just demonstrating what i just said so this is a network wire how it looks this is what a network wire looks like now let's take a look at the details the diagram the diagrammatical details so to enhance computer communication we have to look at the details details now the signal and the p number assignment for rj45 blocks are shown now what each pin does what every wire has a, a a job function every wire on the eight on the, the eight wires in the eight pins each one has a job function we're going to look at it details in details now let's uh, before we do that let's you notice that the transmit take a look at this transmit out signal are marked with plus look at pin one pin one is the transmit out signal pin two is the uh, transmit uh transmit out signal plus right then the pin two is the transmit out signal minus plus minus right then p3 is the receive in receive in you receive in plus okay p4 there is no connection p5 no connection then pin six will be receive receive in minus so p3 and p6 therefore receive receive in one is positive terminal the other one will be negative okay therefore both for receive in transmit out is uh, p1 and p2 p6 and p7 and p8 also no connection okay this is what happens this is what this is how a roj45 modular plug pin assignment are, are being assigned this is how the pins are being assigned meaning this pin one here i'm going to assign the transmit out plus here and pin two transmit out minus here the pin three receive in plus pin 4 nothing pin 5 no connection pin 6 i will put receive in minus pin 7 no connection pin 8 no connection now let's move on quickly to the next one next slide now this is how from one device let's say you know these are wires this ones this one that are be connected this is a cross uh, a cross uh, com connection this is a cross connection we we have cross connection we have a straight through straight through connection between two devices now you have a device a device b from one end and another these are wires that connect these two okay now let's take a look at it pin one for this device is a transmit plus transmit out plus it will what it will be sent to what pin receive in will be what receive in plus will be what pin three remember receiving is in p3 so for cross mode cross connection you have to bring print one transmit out to receive in plus Res, uh, trans transmit out plus in p1 will be sent to receive in plus in p3 remember that we described that in the previous ap uh, then the transmit out minus the transmit out negative terminal will be sent to pin six remember receive in is in pin six and then the p4 and 5 there is no connection and p7 and 8 there is no connection so this is how it works this is how it works okay i hope you understand this block now let's move on for the sake of time so the, 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 we're still uh, expatiating on what i have just uh, described p1 and 2 of device a con uh, connects to p3 and 6 of device b p1 and 2 go to p3 and 6 of device b p1 and 2 of device a go to p3 and 6 of device b and then that's transmit out of device a both the pos positive and negative goes to receive in of device b both the positive and negative now on uh, on the other hand because it's a transmission reception is a uh, full duplex uh, mode transmission now uh, for p2 p1 and 2 of device b now no go now we go to device b and the, the transmit out for device b is pin one and two on device b they also be received in pin three and six of device a vice versa device b one and two now sent 
uh, to uh, three and three and six of the verse A. Okay, so that's what happens in a cross uh, cross uh, communication. Now, what about the gigabit Ethernet for the gigabit Ethernet? Now, let's take a look at that. For the gigabit Ethernet, it's there's a difference with the signal names of the UTP cables when you operate it at one gigabit. You know, giga means one thousand mega. One gigabit is one thousand megabits. You know this. You already know your physics very well from uh, high school. You know your physics from your high school, your grade twelve physics and your A level physics and all of uh, your hundred first year degree physics and all of these things you've studied. They are super uh, enough for on a clear understanding of this uh, variable explanation. Now let's take a look at this. One gigabit is a high speed. Uh, trust me, this is super high speed data transmission rate and the 10 gigabit you know this 10 gigabit is in another level this cat several i told you in in the one of our lecture that this is for cat several which is currently it just says a standard that is theoretically developed that is not currently in use but 10 gigabit per second is 10,000 megabit per second speed of data <laughs> this is going to be something else this is a phenomenon this is a super phenomenon. Now let's go on quickly. At this, at this higher data rates, the use of four wire pairs is required. You have to use. Let's go back to it. You have to use all these four wire pairs, both the two here and the two here, the two here and the two here. You have to use both. You have to use all the four wire pairs at the same time simultaneously, concurrently. You have to use them. Transmission reception. This will be a full a full duplex mode gigabit transmission and reception this is not a a, a, a chase play and and on top of that on top of that this is required and we say the wire pairs is required and the data is bidirectional the data meaning it transmits and come back receive transmitted so it's bidirectional it's not just one mode it's not a half duplex it's a full duplex mode it transmit and receive transmit and receive which means that the same wire pairs are being used for both transmitting and receiving data that's what we mean by this phenomenon the, the pin assignments and the, the signal names are provided now let's take a look at that this is for the a standard a the t568a remember the pin one is a white white gray color okay you see this is transmit one pin one is for the transmit one transmit out one is positive right it's positive transmit out one is positive you can see this one the 1000 megabit per second means one gigabit you know this right what well, this is one mega uh, one gigabit per second and this one is the 10 gigabit per second okay so this is a bi-directional transfer in a a plus so because we have a plus a minus b plus b minus we have c plus c minus and d d, d plus d minus because there are eight wires all together which forms pair of four now this is their designation this is used to designate this this pin. then you know the a this one is green completely green from p2 p2 is connected with the green color and this is transmit out minus so that's why we have it's a bi-directional case that's why we have uh, bi direction bi is bi directional and this is the the code the name for the code this is a okay a minus and then we move to the next one p3 remember is what p3 is a receipt is receive pin it's a receive p but the positive receive pin okay which is b plus here then p6 is the next one remember p4 and p5 though they have their color the 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 blue color and the white blue color they we, we say there's no connection at this point but pin c is a receive minus so we have we call it the b minus so the pin four and five that does not have a connection we call it c plus and c minus and then the, the uh, this uh, pin seven which carries a white orange color i'm sorry white brown color uh goes to pin seven and it has no connection we we'll call it d plus and this one the brown color we we'll call it d minus this is for standard a now let's go to standard b standard b means the t five six eight b the same thing we do here based on their color based on their color let's move on so that we don't waste time everything i've said here is the same thing except that the color for pin one 
for standard b is white orange not white green uh, this one goes with the color coded i have explained before the color using the color mapping now let's move on quickly transmission reception assignment how do we assign this color in the case of transmission reception in a LAN, LAN network now in a LAN network the proper assignment of the transmit and receive pair is managed by a hub or a switch we, we are not the one doing that it's already developed by the by this hardware uh, uh, Hawaii like all these Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii hardware machines uh, companies for telecommunication uh, infrastructure they are called telecommunication infrastructure manufacturers they manufacture telecommunication infrastructure so if you see a telecommunication closet most of them are even developed and manufactured by Hawaii CME you know CME in Germany Hawaii in China so these are big telecommunication manufacturer giants they manufacture all these things so they've done they've done their job the the color assignment has been done by the switch or is being done by the switch and the hub not typically in the cable okay your your cable is just to know the correct color to put in the plug in your, your modular plug or your modular jack so that you just plug in but the switch is has done has been assigned with these colors okay the switch already understand this color code so your job is just to do the proper Co uh, arrangement in your modular jack or your modular plug and then you can plug it and receive your network once the network is properly done is done now let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, remember in a star topology all the network communication travels through a switch or a hub i uh, have explained the difference between switch and hub a hub is like old pattern old fashion hub uh, you have to wait one packet has to wait for the other one hub is like uh, it's like old school you know in today's uh, technology you we are specifically we are more into switch switch has intelligent uh, ability to decide which one go this one come this one go they can they can go so switch is uh, mostly of use but we still teach theoretically we still teach hub but the fact is that switch is uh, more of uh, use today now let's go to you see uh, in most of the teleco uh, telecommunication like Huawei, CME, and others, no, it's not only our OSMS that manufacture uh, telecommunication equipment, but I'm saying these are big giant ones that, that you should be very fam super familiar with. Now, you will see an X on many of the hub or switches input ports, indicates that this is a cross connected input. Okay, you see this mark. When you see this one, it's showing that it's a cross connected one. So, meaning you have to follow what? This standard. You have to, when you are laying them, you have to follow this standard. It's cross connected. Is that okay so let's say uh, quickly and uh, but even in some cases they don't mark this most of food are not most of food are not this is the standard they do follow okay this means that the transmit and the receive pairs are eternally swap to maintain proper signal alignment of the transmit and receive pairs okay okay so even if the x is missing in most of the of the hub and switches the hub or switch still properly aligned to the transmission and reception wire pairs as uh, we have explained now let's quickly look at data communication now in data communications category 6 or category 5e remember 5 is a enhanced standard 5 of uh, of uh, cabling okay category 5 or 5e and category 6 three step pair cable are used to connect networking co components to each other in the network that's what we use right did i i explained one of the classes uh, in one of the lectures that this is these are these are super in use and the 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 several that has for come category seven is still like in theory we've not started recabling our offices and there's no need at the moment okay for for, for recabling now these cables are commonly called the patch cables these cables are called what a usual telecommunication you can call them the patch cables they are terminated in the patch panel in the telecommunication closet okay or the patch plates on the wall okay now let's move on uh, in this section a technique for terminating uh cat c's or cat 5e cables with rg45 modular plugs or rg45 modulo jack it will be demonstrated in we have to learn how this is done how the termination is done for two different configurations of patch cables straight we're going to do for straight through connection and the cross crossover cables we're going to do now let's move on quickly for the straight through this is super easy for straight through this is easy why 
because you don't have let's say this is device a device a and this is device b and what you do you just take the color of uh, if you're using the standard a1 or standard b any any one you're using okay if you use the standard a1 the uh, t 568a then you would take if you are using what we call the straight through cable okay you take the p1 to p1 or the other device so you know the color already white green if you're using standard a so you take p1 here to p1 on the device b right you take p2 on device a to p2 on device b this is super easy this way you don't have to do much you take p3 you take p3 on device a to p3 on device b you take p4 on device b a to p4 on device b so you're not basically straight through is super easy you know so respectively you do the same you do every other thing likewise okay so that's what we do for straight through now let's move on quickly you see we have this to this we have the device a p1 to p1 on device b p2 you see the wire map you just follow the wire map and 2 to 2 to 2 3 to 3 4 to 4 5 to 5 6 to 6 7 to 7 8 to 8 so that's it that's all you do that's all you do let's move on quickly now in a crossover remember the first one this one we look at is a straight through this one is straight through arrangement it's super easy now let's move to what we call the crossover for crossover for crossover cabling what we do is we we follow the the way we talk we, we we describe how this is done p1 transmit out here we go to what the receive in the receive in plus of device b p1 transmit out here plus transmit out plus we go to receive in plus of device b p3 of device b and then the second transmit out minus negative we go to pin six we go to pin six you can see we go to pin six of device b and then and then vice versa is going to happen device b we also uh, the transmit out of device b we also send to p3 receive in p3 plus of device uh, device a then they transmit out a minus for device b we send to p6 receive in minus of device a so remember we say this one uh, four five seven and eight no connection so that's what happens here now let's take a look at them one and two transmit out plus we go to three and six transmit out this is plus minus right one and two plus minus transmit out plus minus one is plus two is minus transmit out plus minus for device a we go to receive in plus plus and minus three and six respectively for device b similarly similarly device b transmit out plus minus for one and two we go to three and six receive in plus minus of device a so that's what is the uh, what is what happens in a crossover cables okay now let's move on quickly for the sake of time now let's go to terminating cat c's how do you terminate this this course remember i throw the when you finish this course you should be able to even start doing networking in offices for companies okay you should have the rudimentary okay to start connecting net computer networks by the time we through with the entire course okay we just study by the time you through with this you can go for your cisco ccna ccmp exams you you you're good enough to go for practical networking class uh, programs is that okay now let's quickly take a look at this this section presents step required for terminating cat six cable using the the amp sl series tools this tool is called the amp series sl series tools okay we use them to terminate uh, the wires the the utp wires now the termination procedure uses the amp sl tools cut uh, cables and the amp sl series amp twist 6s category 6 modular jack will be described will be described we go to describe for both for the jack how is done for the jack and how is done for the modular plug okay now let's take a look at terminating this uh, cat sys now in this example rj45 rj45 is also called 8p8c jack okay it's also called uh, 8p8 sys uh, 8p8 c uh, jack this rj45 jack has another name called 8p8 c and it's used to terminate each end of the cable 
each end of the cable we're going to show this is the complete uh, job that has been done this is the end of the job okay this is the end of the job okay this is the end of the job but we're going to show how we get we got to this end we're going to show how we got to this end okay now the other end the other end of of the of the wire or of the uh, of the cable we terminate it to the cat cat 6 roj 45 8 p 8 c patch panel so one goes to the patch panel of the telecommunication closet or any of the patch panel and the other one goes to your work area okay one goes to your work area the other one goes to the the lan uh, network closet you know you have a, a router a, a switch so one goes to them the other one goes to your your work area your computer your desktop computer and so on and so forth okay let's move on quickly but how to both ends of the wire how do we terminate them that's what we're going to learn now terminating cat c okay now let's migrate to how we do terminate this cat c how do we terminate this cable this category of cable prior to terminating the cable first of all you have to do one or two assignments you have to do some check background check because you cannot finish your work you find out the wire you've just uh, sufficiently use energy to carry a termination on the wire is a broken wire so you have to carry out what we call the inspection process you have to inspect the cable for any damage to see if there's any damage right that might has occurred to the to the to the cable so that you will not waste your time in terminating or in doing this job after finishing doing this job you realize that you have wasted your time that the wire is either a naked wire which is super dangerous or it's already cut the wire has a cut it's uh, it's uh, it's open or there is a possible stretch part of the wire meaning it's slacked so you have to do special on the wire you want to do termination on you have to do proper inspection that's number one rule the first thing you do before you carry out termination of your wires now the next thing you do is at the work area outlet the at the end of your work area you add about one feet extra of the wire to 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 the normal wire let's say for example you need a 100 meter or 100 feet wire so what do you do you have to add extra one feet why because if there's error there's a mistake termination mistakes you can still cut off and still do what you have to do without the wire shortening without shortening the wire so you have to put extra these are so these are two precautions you have to take before you start doing terminations of wire on the modular plug or the modular jack you have to carry out these two inspection before you carry out this job okay now let's move on quickly for the sake of time now the next thing to do you remember you cannot splash a, a cat six cable you cannot do that at the distribution head you will route the cable and create a slack loop you create a little slack loop okay a slack loop is simply an extra cable uh, looped at the distribution end that is used if the equipment must be moved you so you have to create a allow us a slack loop a loop a little extra in order to enable the wire in case you are moving the equipment maybe your router or your switch to another a little bit of a distant place from the the usual location remember to allow for about five meter now in the in the telecommunication closet and allow about five meter in the work area so your telecommunication closet in this regard could be your the big telecommunication patch panel where you terminate all your 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 wire your your cables okay or in the case of small network it could be your switch and your router where you terminate your your network cables okay now let's move on quickly for the sake of time now the first let's begin now how the termination process is being carried out now the first step in the termination process is you have to first is to place a bed limited stray relief boot this is called a stray relief boot you place it on the wire this is the first thing you do you have to place a bed limited strain so that to limit the strain that will happen to your internal wire the SS is to keep the wire intact to reduce strain on the wire so that there will be no cut inside within the wi the eight wires that are inside this uh, jacket remember i told you this is a jacket not jack 
Jack is different from a jacket. A jacket is the insulation part of this wire that is covering the eight wires inside. This one, the insulation part that is covering the eight wires, I call the jacket. So you have to put what we call the, the re relief boot on the cable. Now, this is uh, used in the last step to secure the ROJ45 or what you also call the APHC jack. After placing the boot on the cable, you will need to strip approximately 3 inches of the cable jacket from the UTP cable as we are going to demonstrate them in figure A, figure B as I'm going to show you in my next slides. Now, so you're going to splash about 3 inches like we're going to cut this one round and remove about peel off like we're going to peel off 3 inches off. Now let's go to this next slide I think. So before you do that before we peel off, I'm going to uh, this this one demonstrate for figure A that I'm going to show, and this one is going to illustrate for figure B. After placing the boot on the cable, you put the boot on the cable. You will need to strip approximately three inches of the of the cable jacket. This cable jacket, the insulation part of the cable, from the UTP cable. Okay, now let's see what I'm saying. First, this, which this one does for you. And then this, this one does the figure B for you, does this one for you, helps you to peel off, peel off. This, these are th about three inches, three inches be peeled off, three inches be peeled off the wire. The, this jacket, three inches jacket be peeled off the, the main wire, okay? Now the next step is to remove the jacket like we have done, you see? First of all, you cut it round, okay, with your equipment and then you peel off these three inches off the jacket is that okay and uh, they peel the three inches jacket off from the utp cable then bend the cable at the cut you bend this cable at the cut first when you cut you bend the cable you bend it you see the way you bend it so that it's easy for you to for you to go around then the figure a you remove the jacket you you after you cut it round and bend it you quickly remove this jacket peel it off take it off this this one take it off this is relation take it off okay and then uh, uh, after that we expose the four wire pairs as in B but once you peel it off the four wires these four wires are actually eight remember they are twisted two wires twisted to be one pair one pair one pair one pair one pair they are four pair four wire pairs we don't just say four wire we call it four wire pairs they are paired together each wire is two Okay, let's move on quickly for the sake of time. The next thing to do is that we're going to be uh, now peeling off the wire. We're going to be, you see, in the next step, the plastic, the plastic pull line and the strips are cut as shown in A. The plastic, you pull, you, you cut the plastic pull line. There's a plastic pull line. The moment you remove the jacket, you see a plastic pull line. You cut it, okay? The plastic pull line and the stri uh, strips are cut, as you see now. Look at this. It's using this equipment to cut this plastic pull line and the string. It's cutting them off. Okay. Then the plastic line adds strength. The reason why they put it is to add strength to the whole uh, cables. That's the reason why they put it. It's, it's to add strength to the cable for pulling. And the string is used to remove extra. Uh, uh, any extra cable jacket as needed. If there is any extra cable jacket that was not properly cut round, uh, the string helps you to remove it. Okay, that's those were their function. Why in the manufacturing process, both the string, the plastic pull line, and the strings were introduced, were added to the the whole uh, process. Now, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, A, that's what we are doing. Now, in the B. In the B figure B, look at figure B. What is happening in figure B? The wire are sorted in order. Either in order you are following the order of uh, the order of uh, five C T five C eight A, or you are using the order of T five. I think this is this this is a mistake. It's actually T five C eight B, not C C eight B. Okay, please when you're going through your slide, this is uh, an error. It's called T five T five C eight B color order. So you see that you're following the T5, 6, T5, 6, 8A or you're following the T5, 6, 8B. Okay, once you, that is done, we're going to be 
clipping each of the wire to the p to their corresponding p according to the colors that you have learned now look at a this is the light how it looks how the jack looks this is the outside look of a jack okay so this uh the a shows that the sorted wire pairs are matched up with the colors provided on the lazy fixture for a and then this one is they are matched on the lazy feature for b a picture of the side of the lazy two is provided in figure a and b this is the side of the lazy, lazy two where la lazy the wire is side remember according to their color each wire goes to a specific pin inside this uh, inside this uh, feature now let's move up quickly now this is the inside the one i showed just now was is the outside this is the outside how the outside looks of a jack this is the outside jack modular jack how it looks the inside is like this now you see how we've connected this you see each of the color goes to their corresponding pin each color goes this one goes to his pin this one goes to his pin, this one goes to this one goes to. okay this is what is being done after that you see in the next step the wires are placed in the slots of the lazy two are shown now the wires col wire colors are matched to their proper order either you are using a or b if you are using, you are using color order standard a or standard b color order b so it depends so but each colors goes each wire goes to their corresponding color as it should be now after that step after you have done this step then we go to cover it up we go to clip it it has a cover look at it we're going to clip this cover to cover it up then this is the picture of the clip after it's been completely done it looks like this it looks like this the jack the outside the entire outside look uh, these are called the displacement connector these are called the displacement connectors uh, four on this side four on this side for the eight wires okay this is what it looks a if you look at figure a uh, it's uh, an arrow j45 what or what we also call 8p 8c jack this is 8p 8c jack or what you call arrow j45 jack okay this arrow j45 jack the lacy is shown in figure a how we lace the wire inside is shown in figure a now the arrow j45 jack must be properly aligned with the wires on the lacy features to maintain the proper color order if you don't align it properly to maintain the color order then there will be problem there will be problem right we know this we already we studied this now a close-up picture of the amp ss series of amp twist s6s uh, modular jack is provided in b and in figure b is showing that is closed up the closer is also here in figure a but this is a picture this is this is showing when it's closed and this is when it was uh, the lacy has been completed but we just want it, we're about to close it this is when it's been closed and you can see it clearly a uh, picture from a test this one is like a typical picture from a textbook okay now the picture shows the locations of the displacement connector on the modular jack the locations of the picture connections you can see the different colors you can see the different colors uh, how they be laced okay so that now let's move on quickly we say be careful to avoid creating a, a split pair connection don't create a split pair connection because when this happen uh, this happen when a wire from one pair and a wire from the other pair are used to make a connection so a wire from one pair is used wrongly with a wire in another pair so you must know uh, which pairs which wires are being paired together so do not make mistakes we already studied the color coding the pairing together which one goes p1 transmit out if you use a cross through like this one if p1 goes to transmit out goes to p3 receive in plus p1 transmit out plus go to p3 transmit out uh, uh, p3 receive in plus so you, sh you already know this so do not make mistake if you make mistake then you are creating interference there will be network interference and there will be a crosstalk problem and then there will be a, a lot of issues and you may not get the right certification for the job well done okay now let's uh, let's take a look at the, the next slide uh still on the terminating how we terminate after you have uh, let's go back to after you've done this step we, we've done this step then we have to put it back in the proper place it should be so after the next step is to you the ROJ 45 APHC modular jack is inserted into the app sl2 you have to after you've done this you have to insert it look we've done we've you've done this right this is what we've just simply done we have to insert it to the amp 
asset tool okay so it has to be started to the uh, uh, app asset tool right as you see in figure a as you as we see in figure a right or as shown in figure a then the rj45 or what you call the ap 8c jack is next is started to the app sl2 as shown in figure b so after you've inserted it here then we will we will put it on the uh, the tool proper this tool and this tool will help us to clip it into the the connector the c is showing how it's being placed on the connector how it is being placed on the connector i is i will clip the connector so that every wire will clip off I will place it on the connector to cut off every extra wire and clip it properly. That's what is shown in C. Okay, these techniques enable the pair twist to maintain right up and uh, at the point of termination. Okay, in fact, your twisted pair length is less or equal to uh, one quarter each. Okay, now let's move on. After that job is done, you can see we need, remember this one? The one we call the relief boot relief boot right we call it the the uh, stray uh, the limited stray relief boot this after you've clipped everything you will not tighten the stray relief to properly cover the you see here you are still seeing the wire you can still see the wire so we have to use the stray relief boot to cover it up properly we clip it we clip this one this clay relief boot that we started at the beginning when we created three inches before we cut the wire then we we have to clip it to cover this so that we don't see the wire itself you don't see the wire at the end of the day all you see is uh, a complete terminations like this that will be uh, uh, plug into the telecommunication closet the the patch panel of a telecommunication closet on the patch panel of a, your of your network area could be your computer okay so that's that's the uh, how where we are how we terminate uh, uh, plug and uh, uh, sorry how we terminate modular jacket now let's take a look at how we terminate uh, a modular plug let's take a look at plug because this is a modular plug the one we've done just now is for jacket modular jacket now assembly the straight through patch cables this session present techniques for assembly a straight through patch cable right now in straight through patch cable the wire pairs in the cable connects to the same pin number on each end of the cat either category 5 category 5 category 3 patch cables both end you know the both what each wire has both two ends you have to uh, terminate and let's say these two are uh, one wire we just i just bent we bent it right we bent the wire wire you know every single wire has two ends so you terminate one end you also terminate the other end so that you just take this wire and uh, display it and use it once you take this already made wire you just put put it in your computer and plug it to your network or maybe your 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 switch or your router whatever it is okay so we say in a straight through patch cable the wire pairs in the uh, in the cable connects to the same pin numbers on each end of the cat uh, whatever category patch ca cable you are using now a cache a category 5e patch cable with rj45 modular plug is exactly what we are showing in this picture it's exactly what we are showing in this picture now let's take a look at how determination has been done however like we said before in the case of jack how we terminated the jack is the same thing you do where you are terminated the 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 modular plug before you do that you have to check before you do the termination of the uh, you terminate the plug into the wire into the plug you have to inspect the wire for any damage okay that must have occurred or may have occurred uh, then you also check uh, if there is any uh, naked wire any or cut on the wire or any possible stretchy on the cable and then also you have to measure and put extra like we said you have to put extra to avoid error in case there is any mistake or error in installation you still have enough wire to carry out your work now let's move on quickly how this is done first we cut approximately three quarter inches of the cable jack jacket from end of the cable from both ends actually from both ends of the cable three quarter that's three over four three quarter inches of the cable you cut it up 
Only the jacket, not the wire. Be careful not to cut the wire. Only the jacket. Remember, I told you the jacket is the insulation of the wire. You cut it off from both sides of the wire. Notice that the stripper, this is a stripper. This is a tool that we use for stripping the, the jacket off the wires, off the twisted four pair wires, which are altogether eight wires. So be careful in order not to cut the wires. You only cut the jacket off the wire and you cut it round gently. You cut it round gently. Okay. You notice that the stripper is positioned about three quarter each from uh, from the end of the cable. Now the cable insulation is removed by rotating. You have to rotate gently the insulation stripper around the wire. Or say the wire jacket is loose. Once you see it's loose, then you can easily remove it. Then take note. Remember these tools must be periodically adjusted so that the blade cuts through the outer isolation only it does not cut the wire inside okay so you have to periodically adjust it around gently 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 not you are just cutting it one from one side no you have to cut it around little bit step by step round so that you don't cut the wire inside now if the blades are set to uh, if the blades are set to deep they deep down cut then they will nick they will nick the wire and the process may be repeated I Meaning you've made a mistake, you have to do it again if you cut it too deep down. The damaged portions of the cable must be cut off, must be cut away. Nikki of the insulations of the twisted cable is not permitted. You cannot allow Nikki to happen, any nick to happen. Okay, now let's move on quickly. Once you have cut you've cut the wire, once you've cut the wire, this is what you have. You have uh, four twisted pair wires, which are all together eight wires after that because we are doing for straight through now remember we are not doing for the crossover cable we are doing for straight through so you have to open them up you have to open them up you have to open everyone out like this as you see in figure b after doing that the next step <laughs> is you will arrange them okay which one which color goes to pin one will be the first one up here which color go to pin two will be the second one which color goes to P3, the third one? Which color goes to P4? You remember blue goes to P4. Which color goes to P5? Which color goes to P6? Which color goes to P7? Which color goes to P8? The brown goes to P8. So you have to arrange them. And then you're going to put them like that. Like you're going to put them like that into the, the connector. You see, this, is, this picture is a connector. So you go to put each wire will go to its destinated pin. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8. Each of the wire, because you've arranged them, you put them from this end gently. Each one will go to their designated pin. Now let's move on quickly but for the sake of time. After that, then next we're going to use a. Okay, before we talk about the clippy tool, yeah, after you have done this, everyone has got to their respective pin in this connector. Then we're going to use what we call a a creepy tool a creepy tool is used to creep uh, to crimp the wire onto the ROJ45 plug you just clip it like you you to hold it tight together okay the ROJ45 plug is inserted into the creep the creeping tool of the old thing it stops once you make clip once you make that sound then you know it has clipped and then you take it out there you know, that's as in a you see a you put there you put the clip it to on the rj45 connector right then where a modular plug and then you you press it down b is to press it down so that it can clip can make that clip can make that sound once that sound is made then you move on quickly okay so this is uh, how we terminate wire using a, a modular jacket a modular jack and a modular plug so everything you see here, there are terminologies that we have used and we have explained in the course of this class. Thank you very much for your time. And we meet again for section two, part five of this class. Thank you.